Okay, folks, we're starting to record. So, Miss Elizabeth, I'll let you go ahead and take the lead, ma'am. Okay. Hey, it's wonderful to see you all here. Um, it's so nice that we we uh, we've been working a long time towards getting this going, and it's really great to actually be here at this moment. So, um, I just wanted to start off by welcoming everybody. Um, I'm. It's likely that we all know each other, although I haven't actually met Nancy yet. So. So um, if you if you all don't mind, Nancy, would you introduce yourself? And then I think the rest of us, we're sort of all, and I think a lot of you know Nancy, it's just I'm the only one. Um, otherwise, I think the rest of us know each other a lot, right? We don't have to go through everybody. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Yes, please. Okay. Sure, so um, my name is Nancy Fernandez, and um, I actually was asked, um, by Lorraine Garcia to join the group. Um, so Lorraine and I knew each other because I was a teacher at Memorial Middle School. And we used to do a summer program where, where we did research on the Guyanus River. And, um, and, and so basically um, we, we used to determine the water quality um, based on a pollution tolerance index and a um, and also a water quality index. So basically we would we would look at the little critters in the water and then we would test the chemistry. And so um, so that's basically I guess my background. Um, oh. <clears throat> and so I'm retired now so we don't do that anymore but that's what I that's, that's part of what I used to do. Nancy, that's wonderful to hear. And yeah, what a, um, what a great program our, our river is. It's such a great outdoor classroom, right? It's so wonderful to it hear you're really, yeah, using it. Yes, yeah. it, um, it was something that we did probably over, I would say close to a, um, a 10 to 15 year period at middle school. It, it was great. We did it every summer and, and um, we were on different sites along the Venus River, but yes, it's an awesome place. That's so great. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so, so I just wanted to Thank kind you. of go overview of the the purpose of our crew, and um, and our gathering, and then let Stephen kind of give you a sense of. Um, how we're going to proceed. And then we really have, I know the agenda, if you saw the attached one, um, I didn't get the opportunity to, to write on there that some of the things we're not going to address every item on the agenda today. Some of them are just sort of for your reference to get you up to speed and then for your reference to know where we're heading in the future. So um, okay. we, have, we have one business task today, really, and it's enough. That'll be enough to sort of bite off uh, in the process. So I was going to read here the purpose of our of our um, this subcommittee. We were formed in order to assist the city of Las Vegas with the implementation of this community driven and developed shovel ready design that we have for the Guyanus River Park um, and also to provide long term maintenance and um, and thought for the park. So this um, as you all know, the, the Guyanus River Park is quite a big place and there are only so many staff in the Parks and Rec Department at the city. So we're here to help out and kind of figure out how we can uh, assist in, in all that is happening and, and going to be happening there. So uh, Stephen, what, were there a few sort of, ta uh, ta uh, what's the word, uh, <laughs> the sort of, um, just that what tasks do we have to sort of be aware of? It looks like our meetings, um, we're going to record them and then post them later on the city site, right? Oh, oh you're muted. <laughs> I should mute. No, thanks for reminding me. I muted it and then I don't unmute myself. So thank you, Miss Elizabeth. Um, I know it's the first meeting, so just wanted to get the whole uh, discussion about OMA and are we part of OMA? And that way, um, everybody's on the same page. So it is a subcommittee, subcommittee of the Parks and Rec Advisory Committee. Uh, by OMA standards, we do not have to follow OMA. 
but by an executive order by the mayor and the city council, they want all boards, commissions, and advisory committees to all operate under the same type of order. Uh, when it comes to agendas, the same format. When it comes to meeting uh, minutes, same format. When it comes to notifying 72 hours in advance, same format. Uh, and one of the things that they implemented is they've changed where it doesn't have to be live before the meetings had to be live, uh, but they do want them recorded for transparency. And then to give folks the opportunity that can attend right now at noon to go back and review the meeting and be able to stay in touch with whatever uh, is discussed, especially with this hot topic, the Riverwalk. Um, so that being said, I just wanted real quick, briefly, that there is nine members part of this subcommittee. There is the four wards. So Mrs. Miss Armijo, Miss Fernandez Jeffries, Miss Bess, and Mr. Flores are all committee members. Um, you are a ward committee member, just to define when we're discussing the roles. Um, Dr. Wados is an at-large member, along with myself. She is representing the Friends of the Gainas River Park, Miss Leah. Penunson is representing Hermit's Peak Watershed Alliance. And the purpose of these entities was so that no matter if it's me, if it's Leah, if it's Dr. Wados, no matter what, these organizations will always have a seat at the table with the subcommittee. Um, along with Gerald Romero representing Tierra y Montes and Paul Stagner representing the tree board. So the five at larges are the Friends of the Gallinas River Park, Hermit Speak Watershed Alliance, Tierra y Montes, Tree Board, and the City of Las Vegas Parks and Rec Department. And may I interject real quick, Stephen, because um, also the Las Vegas First Business Alliance has agreed to to be a member on this um, in this committee, but we haven't. We're oh, almost yes, sorry. Right, I, we're I, almost I skipped there. that one. I apologize because we That's didn't have okay. a representative yet. I, you're absolutely right. Thank you for correcting me. Yeah, so we're almost there to have the, the member, um, the representative defined, but we just couldn't quite get it organized in time for this meeting. Sorry about that. So before we get into the agenda and the business items, one thing that we have to do with the committee meeting for the first time is we need to have elections. We have to get a nomination for chair and a nomination for vice chair. And I like to follow the Robert, well, we have to follow the Robert rules um, and open it up to the committee to see if there is any nominations for a chair. Is there any questions before we start with nominations? I, as an at-large, would like to recommend nomination of Miss Elizabeth Wattos as chair. I'd second that. Any other nominations? I'll take it for the team, you guys, if I, if I have to. <laughs> sure. Waddles, as long as it? it's rotating. <laughs> do you accept the nomination, ma'am? Yes, I accept the nomination. Thank uh, you. All members in favor, say aye. 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 So aye. Passes. we have our chair, Dr. Elizabeth Wattos. Uh, open the floor for nomination of a vice chair. Um, and if I'm over speaking, I'd like to nominate Miss Leah. I, I accept. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I accept and I also nominate Gerald Romero. I, at this point, am going to decline the nomination because I sit on quite a few. Um, <laughs> I've got offers or positions in a lot of places. So, but I'll second the motion to nominate Leah. I also wonder if somebody outside of the HTWA framework should be nominated. Um, Paul Stagner, I'll nominate him. I would decline. <laughs> Come on. Sorry, Leah. <laughs> and Shane Flores. Uh, I, I have to say I declined for the same reasons as Gerald. I, I'm sorry. I don't. I, yeah, just, I, I know. To be a chair. Sorry. 
I just don't want it to be perceived as HPWA has yeah. um, more authority than other people. Well, then I'll nominate Anna Maria. <laughs> Anything for the water. <laughs> I accept. Thank you. I said I second that nomination. <laughs> Any other nominations? Okay. So it's gonna work a little different. I'm not gonna put it to a yay or nay vote. Uh, I'm gonna go to individuals and just ask for their vote, and that way it's on the record. Um, Dr. Wados, nominations on there is Ms. Leah Knudsen and Mrs. Ana Marie Armijo for vice chair. Your vote, ma'am. I vote for Ana Maria Armijo and, and I'm grateful for her, for her willingness to help with this. Ms. Leah Knudsen. Ana Maria Armijo. Paul Stagner. I would vote for Ana Maria. Ms. Carol Bess. I also vote for Ana Maria. Thank you, Ana Maria. Mr. Gerald Romero. I too will vote for Ana Maria. Uh, Mr. Shane Flores. I also vote for Ana Maria. And Ms. Nancy Fernandez Jeffries. I'll vote for Leah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'll vote. I'll just go with the majority and Miss Anna Marie. So we have our chair. Thank you, Miss Anna Marie. Uh, Mr. Or not? I should say Mr. Uh, yes, ma'am. Miss Leah. Um, are, are, do we, have we agreed to terms for these positions, or will, will we just reelect every year? Um, according to the bylaws, and that's something that can be looked at, and we can change. But the bylaws will state that it's a four-year term unless someone wants to step down. You can change it or we can modify and propose okay. moving forward. Um, or if there's other commitment. Mr. Steven, I'd like to provide a little input. I know on, on our board here at the district, we actually host uh, elections yearly. Um, in the event that people are unable to fill those. And if not, you know, just kind of the continuous officers continue, but um, we found it to be pretty effective to do it yearly. I think I would uh, speak in favor of that idea. I think annually, um, uh, using the tree board as an example, I mean, we, we continually reelect the same person, but at least, you know, it, it gives you that freedom to make changes mm -hmm. when needed. Yeah. So I would suggest we change it to yearly. So what I'll, I think that's the consensus. So what I'll do is I'll get with the city attorney to modify the bylaws a little bit, and then we'll put it on the agenda for our next meeting to put to a vote for the subcommittee. That's okay, folks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank yeah. you, folks. Appreciate it. Uh, Miss Chair, on business items, you, you have the floor, ma'am. Okay. Um, <laughs> thanks, everyone, for doing that. Appreciate appreciate it. Let me um, share my agenda um, document just so I can kind of run through. I think it's gonna show my entire screen, which is kind of full. So I hope, okay. Let's see, hold on one second. <laughs> okay. And just for, just for the record, uh, as Miss Elizabeth is pulling that up. The agenda is not on the city format, but that is my department's as far as we put it on there, but we haven't gotten approval from the whole board, but we will get that transferred over and okay. then get it sent out to everybody. Great. So can can everybody see the document here? Um, the um yes it's just yeah. a word document okay um for some reason when i share this i can't see you guys anymore so um so just holler at me if you need me to um to get my attention for some reason i can't hold both up at the same time it's just a every um virtual meeting sort of has its own quirks and i'm not as used to this one <laughs> so we we really um this is where so you'll have you have this agenda in your in your um, 
email box so you can refer to it. There's a lot of information on here. Like I said, we don't really have time to go through all the details. So if you all would just uh, look at the project status, I'm gonna just kind of read through quickly to give you a sense of where we are and then get as soon as possible to the business item that we need to do today. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to stop now, but also just know that um, as you refer to this, if you have any questions, you can call me or email me and um, I can give you all the background story. So just a quick overview on the project status. I actually realized there's always things kind of forgotten on here because there's so much been going on in the Guyanus River Park, which is wonderful. Um, first off, the shovel ready design that we've been working on for um, pretty continually for, for let's see, uh, three, four years it has been completed and, and we're using that now to, um, to guide the next steps of, of moving from planning to, um, to actually construction of the, of the items of the river park. Um, some amount of the solar lights, um, I forget how many, I put about 15%, it could be a little more, um, of the solar lights um, have been ordered and installed with capital outlay funds. Um, all the benches, I, I use the word stuck, it's like the ones that are just sort of bought pre-made, they've been ordered um, and, and um, they're going to be installed when they arrive. Uh, they, they're, everything's taking a long time. I think no one has not heard about this slow supply chain in the world right now. And um, the benches are, are right in there, probably sitting out in some shipping container, who knows. <laughs> Um, the, the water bottle filling station has also been installed and that was paid for with a, with a grant from the Keep New Mexico Clean and Beautiful program. Uh, so there's, Beth, Beth yes. Stephen is indicating, I think that he wants to say something. Oh, thank Sorry, you. I didn't, I didn't want to interrupt. I apologize. So No, but we, feel free because I can't received, see. So on the construction plans, there was 52 uh, lights light fixtures that were indicated on there. 15 okay. was ordered, which is 29%. 29. Uh, <laughs> yes, and so we still need a, another 37 fixtures to be ordered, um, depending, I know it's on your business items, Ms. Chair, so I'll just say that. Um, okay. With the benches, we just received them on Friday. Oh they my are, gosh. We right. just got all of them. Uh, they are in our yard. They are beautiful. They are well constructed. Um, good choice by everybody that's been involved. Um, cool. They're going to be, and I'm working with a few contractors now to work on the slabs so that we can get them installed. How many? How many benches are there, Stephen? Let me give you. I, I think I remember right off. For some reason, I was just reading that this morning, Stephen. I think there are 21 benches all together. And and is that about the order of magnitude? I wanted to say 22, but I could be wrong. I don't have the slip right in front of me. I apologize. It's close to that. And this is all the benches, not including any sites that had specific, more kind of artistic benches made out of logs or, or other artistic benches, but for all the sort of regular furnishing. This is great news, Stephen. That wonderful that- I'm sorry to interrupt you, Chair, but I just wanted to add that information. Thanks. Leah? Yeah. Um, I don't know if this is appropriate right now, but I'm wondering if while Stephen is getting the quote for installing the benches, if he could also add in the quotes for doing the slabs for the nine trash cans, um, because we do have funding for four of them, and we've asked the um, lodgers tax for the additional five, so um, that would be the next slab need. Um, anyway, just a request, but so um i haven't uh reached out to contractors to do it i felt like it was something because i know the last ones miss leah we did internally right and uh i would just look to i still have material i ordered enough material in order to have uh if that's okay to the committee that we'll just do it internally and mm -hmm. uh, i know that paul and Dr. Waddles, you both went on a site visit just again, just look at it again, based on the construction plans and identified the areas. And yeah. I will be future casting some of the weather and get the slabs in right away, even before we have the trash can so that they're at least there. Okay. 
Great. As long as the anchors get installed in the in the concrete, right? Yes. When it's wet. Excellent. Thanks for that great update, Stephen. Things see even things happen in a short time there. <laughs> um, there, just to kind of quickly go down the list. There's also we got an opportunity to have a beautiful mural done at the entrance of Bridge Street. Um, there, the a big the big work of the river restoration work done by Hermit's Peak Watershed Alliance from the second walking bridge by the by the West Las Vegas schools down to Prince Street was completed, is, or is nearly completed. There may be a little bit of, um, a few little pieces left there. Um, and that's a big one. <laughs> um, also, uh, not on this list, um, Thierry Montes took the lead to do some clearing of some invasive elms right around Bridge Street to make it the river more accessible as well. Um, and also our educational programs continue, the Keep New, Mex New Mexico Clean and Beautiful program, which is from the tourism department. Um, we're in the second year of that, um, that the city has. And um, the Hermit's Peak Watershed Alliance is running it. It's going to start in the spring, its second outdoor equity fund program to get kids out um in doing outdoor recreation in the river park um specifically birding and fly fishing and and understanding the insects related to fly fishing so this is where it connects to all that work that nancy had done um years ago where where the kids learn about the insects that the trout eat and then get to go out fly fishing with all the gear and everything the the friends of the Guinness river park has continued to do uh coordinate volunteer activities like planting days and cleanups and other fun social programming. There's some Christmas caroling and um, and things coming up. Um, we had the opportunity to where the city and, and uh, the Friends of the Guinness River Park came together to um, do some tours for the senior citizens. And uh, we're looking into to fleshing that out some more because it was so much fun. And so I just, are there any questions before we move on to our main business item that I'll describe? I'm gonna come back over here. <laughs> Everybody all right? Okay. Thanks for being so patient. This is a little awkward to not be able to see you while I read, but that's okay. So the, the main thing that, we, we, that we've got to do um, right away, at the end, um, I'd like to kind of just briefly give you a, a, an idea of what we're thinking about that needs to be done. Some things that, that we're going to need to address coming up here in the next year, um, bit by bit. But the really the thing that's sort of rising to the top of our needs is that the, the city has some capital outlay funding um, left, plus a little bit more because of the, the city councilors decided to allot some more funds, um, 45,000 to be specific, towards the, the, this initial construction of the Guyanus River Park element, the park elements. So there's approximately, and, and I'm just giving a rough estimate now, there's a good uh, $300,000 that needs to be set, spent as um, encumbered at least as soon as possible. Um, and so what we need to think about now, and it's up to all of us really, is to to help to advise the city about what are the priorities. Um, there are certain things like, you know, I, I wrote it here, excuse the sort of rambling nature of this, but like the order of operations, you know, you can't, you don't wanna put concrete down and then have to take it out to put something else in. So there's certain appropriate order of, of building of things. But then there's also things to consider like safety, um, like visibility. So, you know, is it, would it be smart to take this, these funds and use it to do one very highly visible area? Like for instance, at Bridge Street on the north, north entrance of the park, that area is, is in real need of um, a spiffing up, I should say, cause it's, 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 it just hasn't had any um, attention for a while. Um, so is it more important to focus on one area like that to spend the money or is it more important to think about safety and one bit at a time? And this, these are the things that I, I was hoping that we could kind of get into this conversation some with the time we have today 
and then um, and make some recommendations to Stephen and the city manager as they go forward because they they are under pressure to need to encumber these funds and start spending them because when the next capital outlay session comes, the state legislature will can decide to to give the project more funding to help complete um, the the um, the budget. By the way, I think I didn't mention. Um, for the complete shovel ready design, the budget is approximately $3 million to, to finish everything. And, um, and all of you are so welcome. I could show you, send you the design and sit down with you and look at it. There's a lot of different elements in there. And um, so the funding that we have is, is, is just a small part of what, what needs to, um, what the total will need to be. So the, the pressure to start spending this money so that when the, when the legislature gets together again and says, um, okay, have you spent what we gave you already? Then if, if, if they have, then it, then it reflects well on, on the city and the project. So uh, note here, look, this is just a really kind of a, a note the question mark, the one possible order that we can consider for spending um, the capital outlay funds are, would be to, you know, before anything else goes in, just repave the northern section. Um, by northern section, I mean between Bridge Street and Mills, where the, the walking path hasn't been repaved for some time. Um, we may need to consider irrigation where appropriate because we wouldn't want to, um, would want it, that would be good to do before paving. It's one of those um, order of operations things. Uh, there's also, as Stephen mentioned, there's about 70% of the, light, the lights to remaining that need to be um, purchased and installed, and that could be done. There are, in the plans, there are several gates um, so that it limits access to um, motorized vehicles. The gates are accessible and ADA accessible. Um, people can walk through them, but they, they make it so that there's some uh, level of safety in the park because there's people can't drive in as easily. So the Beth? gates, yeah, go ahead. Can you hear me, Beth? Yeah. I think I'm gonna stop for now. I'm gonna stop presenting for now. Go ahead, Ana Maria. Can you hear me? Oh, Ana Maria, go ahead. Maybe. Yes, that there are a few things that we could focus on, including paving. Ana Maria, your line is breaking up. I can't hear you. It, I'm just getting a few words. Can you repeat that? No, yeah, it's, it's just, it, I just wanted to bring it to your attention that it's just a little choppy. Oh, okay. Oh, it's choppy on my end? Yeah. I'm sorry. This is the, the trick. Yeah. Has it been, have you guys had a hard time hearing me this whole time? No, for me, no. Anna Maria is chopping in and out, but you're clear. So oh, yeah. I, Maria, yeah. I hate to tell you this. I think it's on your end. Oh, shoot. Right. Sorry, Anna Maria. Usually it's on my end because I live rurally, so our internet's not always. Yeah. Okay. So, Ana Maria, any questions that you have, we could all you could always ask those, and and I'm well, I'm the, happy the, to does share. Does this program have a chat feature that Ana Maria can you put your questions in the chat? Or I know I don't see it. Oh yeah, yeah, there is one. I think she's saying that she can't really hear your presentation, so she doesn't know what's being said. Is my impression of what she said? Yeah, that's no good, huh? Here's the yeah, chat. Yeah. I found cool. it. It's the chat is over on the lower right hand side. Um, if anyone wants to put something in there. Um, so, Ana Maria, to recap kind of briefly for Ana Maria and, and all of us, is that, so the goal at this, in this meeting is to at least come up with, at least discuss what the priority should be for, um, for helping the city to decide what, um, what they should spend this capital outlay funding that they already have, um, what, what they should, what are the priorities that they should use it for? Um, let me let me say the uh, the list one more time. Go ahead, Leah. I'm sorry, I was going to dive into the discussion. If you want to repeat the list, go ahead. No. 
just just briefly let me repeat the list so possibilities and these are not the only things but some things that rose to the top in discussions are repaving of the path in the section north of bridge street um, maybe irrigation the remaining lighting solar lighting gates uh, picnic tables which would be ordered similarly to the benches just ordered and then installed and then um, another thing to consider would be maybe the entrance area right there at Bridge Street on the north side, that if that whole area were, um, were completed, there's a lot of programming in there in the design, then um, that would be highly visible and attractive to tourists and also give the sense to the community of that things are getting completed. I just wanted to note one more thing before we get into the discussion is that we do have some, um, we, we, we will be, fo folks will be looking for other funds, grants and things to, to um, accomplish some of the, these. It, not every piece here has to be paid for with capital outlay funding and, and it probably couldn't be. So one thing I just wanted to keep in mind is that for instance, and it's a question, maybe this entrance area at Bridge Street could be funded some other way with a grant or uh, the city lodgers tax funds or something like that. So here's something to keep in mind. What we want to discuss today is what should we you what should we recommend the um, the city use the capital outlay money for specifically? Yes, Gerald. Okay, so I have a couple of questions. One is, do you know when the city must spend the money by? And um, the other one too that I kind of wanted to raise because I know there's there's. Uh, a design being generated and potential work on the river itself, north of bridge. And I believe that putting infrastructure in before the river works done is really gonna impede the contractor's ability to, to go ahead and conduct that project. So I would urge this infrastructure, this capital outlay money be placed in, in uh, areas that the river's already been rehabbed. Even though, you know, I, I totally get the, I, the concept of doing it somewhere highly visible, but I, I think it's gonna create issue, logistical issues as far as river restoration on that Northern part. Thank you for bringing that up, Gerald. I'll let Leah answer that. Um, Gerald, I have talked to the contractor and first of all, um, that next phase of river restoration work is looking really good. We don't have um, everything um, signed, but please do not disseminate information, but it's looking really promising. Um, that we'll be able to do that. Um, okay. I did talk to the contractor, and he can access the river from the west side of the river. Um, he doesn't need to go on the north on the northeast side. Actually, it's preferable to go in on the west side. The access is much better anyway. So I think we have it taken care of so that if we decide to do that northeast entrance, it's okay from a contractor standpoint. So there's okay. that. Um, one thing that I wanted to add is another thing that I think about is, are there other funding sources that are really appropriate for certain tasks and highly possible? And the trails, um, while I think order of operations, it makes good sense for the um, trail paving to go in, I also think that that's going to be a high dollar item. Um, it may go beyond the $300,000 that's available, plus... Um, it takes a lot to put all that together. You need engineering, you need um, all kinds of things to be done, and I'm not sure we could get it done quickly. Um, so it seems to me that the trails effort um, may be something that if we can figure out how to do the other pieces, like picnic tables and trash cans and lights, um, and make sure we're outside of that trail footprint, um, it seems like taking on the trail is a big effort that I don't know we're going to be able to pull off quickly. And there are other funding sources that are really appropriate for trails. That's a good point. Uh, I also want to answer Gerald's question too about when the money has to be sent. Um, I, I would like to answer it. I don't know the specific answer, the exact answer, but I remember hearing. So um, Stephen, if you're listening, um, probably it's in the city contract. I remember hearing that typically the capital outlay funds have to be spent within an order of a few years. So there's not a huge rush to spend it before the money's taken away, but the real pressure to spend the money 
comes from the legislature's consideration of more funds. Um, what the the feedback that the city received last year that we got wind of was that um, the the legislature wanted to see the money spent more um, quickly or at least encumbered more quickly so that they could see that it's that there's progress being made. That was what um, when when Bill Taylor was the city manager, he received that that um, message from the state legislature. Uh, yeah, Leah, you had your hand up. Oops. Uh, 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 Paul. Yes, in, in light of what you're saying there, um, the the whole redevelopment of the northeast corner there next to Bridge Street, is that um, is that something that's just ready right now, or is it something that will need further permitting or you know further development before we could start it? If if there's kind of a an urgency. Uh, it seems like maybe some things that are more easily encumbered, some things that we can just sort of purchase uh, would be more more efficient uh, to, yeah. to pay the money for the gates or, you know, something like that, rather than to commit it to a project, which is a pretty involved large project, which might also require uh, planning and funding from the city, like for the road coming in from Bridge Street into the new parking lot. Uh, that's an integral part of that design. And uh, I don't, we don't know that the city is ready to do that. Uh, I think that would be a question that we would have to have answered first. I think that's a really good point, Paul. And that area definitely is, um, is visible. Um, it's almost complete in the sense of we have most of the pieces together, but there are a few little intricacies that have to be dealt with and ironed out first. And maybe, I don't know if I want to get into that just now, but you're right. It may be end up proved to be a bit more complicated than just going ahead um, with ordering picnic tables or lights, say. Yeah. Uh, Leah, were you going to say something? Yeah, I'd like um, Stephen to chime in on this, but um, it seems like that area on the northeast entrance is likely to require a um, contract, a general contractor to coordinate that. There are lots of pieces that need to be um, put together smoothly, and this committee is, cannot serve in that role, and maybe Stephen can, but Stephen, I know you have Rodriguez Park and lots of other really big projects to coordinate, so we may need to hire a general contractor um, to put that together. So that could take a little bit longer. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I, I had a couple of questions about this. One is I, I don't think that it, I feel like I can even really have good input on this until I saw the shovel ready plan. So I think that that would be one thing is like, be nice to see that stuff. So yeah, I would say do definitely send that out to all of us because then I think that we could look at this better. Um, I definitely think that I, I would like to see prioritized because I totally agree with you and it's kind of where my mind went, which are anything that has, has to go in that's like, I don't know, to call it deep infrastructure or stuff like irrigation or stuff that's going to require a lot of tearing things up needs to happen first and that should definitely be the priority so like maybe the irrigation or anything else but the element i'd like to introduce possibly is to also be thinking about anything that can be established that is going to take a long time to develop so here we're thinking about that is all right like fruit trees do we want to maybe put in some fruit trees very early now because those are going to take years to, to come in as a feature i'm also thinking about that sort of habitat rehabilitation that we talked about that's going to take years to do below where the arbor is supposed to be like you know that sort of i don't even know what to call it because i don't know i'm not a botanist or no landscape teacher but we had talked about like how that needed to be restored and that was going to take years to get back to a much more and there might be other places like that you know and so i'm thinking just like these things that are going to take years to do, can we? Are there any of them that can we can establish where they won't be disrupted later? So, but I, I wouldn't know what any of those are other than those two random examples until unless I saw the plan. Okay, yeah, and somehow I thought 
that you all received a copy of the plan, but that could be that that's not the case. So I'm going, I'll send it myself. Um, okay. It's a big old PDF file and it's a it, bit of a chunk to chew up. Maybe at some time, if anybody here who would like to sit down with me to look at it, I always kind of like an excuse to look at it in more detail and answer questions because it helps me understand it a little better. I'm not, it's like made for a contractor to look at and that's not my background. So the more I look at it and the more I answer questions, the better I feel about it. So really, if anyone wants to get together outside of this um, environment just to do that, um, I would be willing as well. You, um, you may have sent it out, but if an email's two weeks old now, it might as well have been sent in no. the Patius era or something like that. I know. There, there's a comment I saw, by the way, pop up from Anna Maria that is in the chat. So I would say check the chat because I think other there like at least she's talking in there so uh, thanks guys you, yeah i'm not i definitely am not in the um i'm i'm not in the zone of running virtual meetings you think we all would be by now but thanks for helping me and for being patient okay ana maria said can we allocate any of the capital outlay to create jobs for teens this summer that's a good question ana maria i no. think Capital outlay is only stuff. It can't pay for things, but we do have, the city actually has funds right now to hire teens. Um, not dozens and dozens of them, but at least half a dozen of them for a good, a good job for the rest of the year. And we're working on that. So we do have that in a little capacity and we'll build on that because um, that's by the way, that Keep New Mexico Clean and Beautiful program. Um, Steven says, we have until 2023 to spend the money in order to ask for more capital outlay, we need to encumber by the end of March, 2022. So, um, so yeah, really good point. And then Stephen says the same thing, good. I feel like we're all on the same page and thanks for that. Um, one more thing too about what Shane said about orchards. Yeah, there's a real strong desire to get things that take a long time um, going like fruit trees and things. Um, specifically um, in the area that's been designated as the unity orchard but the the key piece there you kind of nailed it is that you can't plant anything until you know that it can survive so we've got a the irrigation piece has to be sorted out first and it's it's um those pieces tend to be a little bit complicated to plan but have to be done and um they also tend to be kind of expensive and and there's a lot of pieces to consider like depending on where the water comes from um, if there are water restrictions uh, and it's drought, we've got some plants still need to be watered. So these are, this is, you're right, that's something that just really has to be dealt with first, our irrigation issues. The whole, there aren't irrigation plans for the whole entire river park in the plan. They're sort of discrete areas, so they can all be treated a little differently. But you're right, that's something that probably does need to be considered um, a priority. Um, any other thoughts as as we sort of? I have a I have a question totally off, uh, but I've got this big pop up that's just obscured about half the screen and it has ads and news and anybody know how to get rid of that? Oh my gosh, our mind it's doesn't. Coming from Google. Oh no. Um, Anyone else get that? No. I can't find a way to get rid of it. Sorry, Paul. All right, oh. go ahead. I'll work okay. on that. Okay. Okay. And Gerald, I see your hand up now. I didn't see it before, sorry. Okay, so I guess what I was gonna recommend, um, I know just on my end, it's been a while since I took a look at the plan. Um, I have multiple plans in my head. <laughs> and you know, I think it would probably be a good idea for all of us to, to sit down again and take a really good hard look at them, especially dollar numbers, priority levels. And if we do have, you know, to the end of March to, to go ahead and do this, I'd recommend we we all take a look at the plans again and kind of formulate those opinions off of what the plans read and what we as individuals think would be a priority and then come to a consensus. But off the top of my head, I, I honestly can't even make a recommendation today because I don't remember half of it. That's a really good point, Gerald, and really fair. Thanks for, for um, making that clear. Yeah, Leah. Um, Stephen, can you print a couple copies of these plans? Because I can only print them at 11 by 17. It's very hard to see them. And it would be handy if we had maybe um, two sets of big plan formats for us to look at. Um, is that possible? I'll have to look at other departments. I don't have the capability within my department to print anything bigger than 11 by 17 as well. Um, so that would have to be outsourced. I can look at that 
to get uh, copies, but it's going to take me a little bit of time, but I'll work on that. Yes, ma'am. I'll put it on my to do. Okay. I have one other thing. Um, just so everybody knows, um, HPWA and the Unity Orchard Group has raised over $9,000 to work in the Arboretum already, and they have been very effective at fundraising, and there are some discussions about having West Las Vegas um, help with the irrigation system. So I think the Unity Orchard should go off the table for funding um, because I do feel like the Unity Orchard group has been very effective at supporting that. Oh yeah, thanks for clarifying that. I, I think um, definitely helping that group organize themselves and have the structure in place so that they can move forward is something that um, is on the future needs to consider our tasks that we have to do. But right, um, they they wouldn't need the capital outlay funding to pay for parts of that project, right? There are more pressing things that that money can be spent on. Great. So, yeah, so Carol. It, it seems to me that um, it does make sense to do the paving first, but it sounds like it's a little bigger and more expensive than what we're, you know, prepared to do right now. But if we could, um, talk to a contractor who does that work and find out how much of a clearance on either side of it that they need in order to be able to do the work effectively and efficiently without having to remove a lot of stuff. That would help us. And then we could go ahead and buy things like picnic tables and um, the gates. We could begin to sort of acquire those things so that we're ready to move ahead and we know where they want to go. That's a really good point, Carol, um, because I think, as Stephen said, he, they, the benches have arrived and they can put them somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's something to consider. The things that could just be bought straight away and don't have to be constructed and managed like lights and picnic tables, right. it's possible that they could be ordered and then we have to just get ourselves ready to prepare, like you said, either um, make space for them when they get installed or mm -hmm. or work on paving the path before that's done. It, it, it's possible to kind of get the, have those things just there and ready to go when we need them because it's probably gonna take a while for them to arrive anyway. That's that's something that could be a really kind of an easy fix. Mm -hmm. um, okay, let's see. So really, I think the consensus is that um, everybody, and I, and I totally understand, and I know we really just wanted to get together now that we're, um, we're formed. And um, I understand it's a little ambitious to say, well, we should come up with a decision, but you're right. Let's take some time um, to look at the design and then we can plan our next meeting um, so that we, we do our homework and we're ready to give recommendations about, um, about these priorities. Uh, the, that's another point too, and Stephen, you can jump in please if you, if you like to. Um, we're generally planning to meet the second to last Monday of every month, just to have it on your calendar at noon. So second to last Monday of every month um, at, at noon, except next month is the holidays. And so the question I just wanna to put to you before we, um, we all have to move on is next month, it, would, it seems like, I know there's not a huge rush um, that the money doesn't have to be encumbered technically but until March, but the sense I got from the, the different legislators that I've talked to is that when they meet in January, they wanna see progress. So I understand that there's not so much pressure, but I kind of feel pressure too. So it could be um, misled there. Um, so, so I guess I'm asking you all if you're willing to meet early next month or should we just mm -hmm. wait until uh, January? I, I, I'm glad you said it because I was going to risk everybody hating me to suggest that. Uh, I was going to say that I felt like at the risk of everybody hating me that we have a special meeting, which should just be our regular meeting early next month after we've all had a chance to look at the plans. Yeah, is I, everyone I agree. okay with that? I oh, agree. Okay. Okay. Um, Anna Maria has offered to have a meeting at her house so that we could look at the plans together. And I think that's a great idea as well. And But that couldn't be this regular meeting, right? right. Is that's what you oh, mean, Anna Maria, right? Okay. 
Yeah, so that, it, would be, it would be before the next meeting to meet and look at the map. And that could be for anyone who just feels like getting um, a little extra time with it. Um, someone like Gerald, who looks at plans a lot, probably could take it in kind of quickly. I myself kind of, I like to sit down with everyone because I'm like, what the heck is that? And where, yeah, it's just, it sort of depends on our, our level of um, kind of our, our comfort level with that. Um, so is Monday at noon okay for people? Oh, go ahead, Stephen. Sorry. <laughs> just want to keep in mind, just for transparency, that I would discourage everybody getting together at the same time to review the plans so that there's not any oh, right. um, discrepancies that it was prior prior meeting or meeting that wasn't publicized that there was discussion and so when it comes to the meeting that we're all set this is what's going to happen um yeah i would encourage people to review the plans um there's nothing wrong with a few members getting together because there's only a few sets of plans but to have the whole committee i would recommend that that not take place right okay. just to, just avoid a quorum and you'll be fine yeah so okay nine, so don't make it more than five uh, all right. Hopefully some of us are comfortable with reviewing plans because it's just one of those practical things where it, sometimes you have to sit down and do the homework together. <laughs> yeah, but I see what you mean, Stephen. We're, there there would be no intention of trying to decide how things need to be done. It would just be a the only reason to get together at Ana Maria's house would be to try to understand something that's difficult to understand, to be completely frank about it. <laughs> Um, okay, so in December, we have Monday, the first two Mondays are the 6th and the 13th. Um, let me see. Um, do either of those days stand out as being um, better for anybody? Uh, 13th. 13th is better for you? I recommend the 13th just for scheduling purposes of announcing the meeting on the city website. I would prefer the 13th as well. Okay. Well, and the 13th would also give those people who have not had the chance to look at the plans a little time to do so before the next meeting. Yeah. So I, I would go for the 13th. Thank you for being willing, everyone, to be flexible next month and um, and meet a little early. That's that's going to be really helpful to um, make sure to stay on top of this. <laughs> and just so that we're just clarification, so we're all on the same page, the 13th, if that's decided, that will be a special meeting. The regular meeting will be canceled. Um, if that's how it has to be said, I see it as the regular meeting in December. Okay, I see. Yeah, like I you see. mean the the second to last Monday has to be canceled because of Christmas, mm -hmm. right? Just yeah. yes. Is that what you mean? Okay. And if we yeah, because if we move the, any other date, it has to be considered a special meeting. Got it. Mm -hmm. Thanks for helping me with the lingo. Steven. No, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm definitely, no, don't be sorry. I don't know. I'm really bad about knowing what's called. So I need all of your help, please. <laughs> okay, so is everyone then okay with um, having a special meeting next month on December 13th at noon? And we'll have to have it in this format, but then canceling the regular meeting for next month. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think I then... That uh, there's the if everybody would just um, take some time before our next meeting to look at the last part of the agenda it says future tasks there are some things on that list that are kind of like um, most of them are sort of big old chunks to bite off some of them are just things that we're gonna we're have to constantly think about if you would just take the time too to read through that and um, and consider that we will talk about that as soon as we can. And I think kind of relatively soon, but but first kind of get through this discussion of priorities and then start to think about some some longer term things and some shorter term time frame things that that really need to be accomplished with the project. Okay. Stephen, do you I'm um, sorry, yes, sir. I'd also like to see um, when we have our next meeting is a potential list of priorities from the city side because you folks are definitely going to have some poly safety priorities and things like that too that we also need to be aware of oh yeah so that, that's not a problem i have my list um okay, okay. so that'll work and, yes, sir. and i that. just want you to know too for stephen and gerald there this list that i 
came up with came from speaking with Stephen and okay. with the city manager. It wasn't my I I tend to put like playgrounds on the top of my list. I'm just goofy that way. So I'm like, <laughs> oh, I forgot. So really, this list did come from um, the advice from the city. But if you Stephen, please be um, vigilant and let me know if I'm forgetting anything that you all had said was a priority. Uh, Paul, your hands raised. Yeah, along those same lines, I was wondering if maybe not by the next meeting, but at least by the January meeting, um, if Stephen, if you could find out what what we need to consider as far as planning and ordering of priorities for that northeast corner, that uh, northeast of the bridge, uh, like the city building the road, what it would take in terms of time and dollars uh, so that when we do get ready to start that that project whenever that is that we would know what what's doable at that time okay yeah. good um and then just so everybody knows too where what one thing we're working on now is taking the design and the total budget for that design and breaking it into pieces um, not the design into pieces, but the budget so that we know what the different elements will cost so we can have a better sense of um, of what, how much it will cost to do various elements here. Okay, everyone, um, thank you so much for your attention. Uh, Stephen, tell me what to do next. <laughs> uh, I just need a, a motion by one of the committee members to adjourn. So moved. I second. I vote yes. So first by Mr. Stagner, a second by Mr. Armijo. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, folks. Aye. Aye. Thank you all so much for your, your efforts and your help with this. Okay.